Um, what I'd like to talk about today is about um, I, the chairs. Yeah, just kind of real quick. Um, so what I'd like to talk about are how uh, how some ideas uh, that are used often in science have been uh, and why too many people. Should I think it? No. <laughs> <laughs> You should bring your car up and just park it here because that's what I see. What I'd like to talk about is, uh, is uh, ideas and how they get misappropriated uh, by science. But mostly I want to focus on one idea uh, that's used uh, throughout science and misused throughout uh, popular culture and society. Mostly, um, the result of it seems to be to, to, uh, to give uh, false hope to people, uh, to give uh, to give solutions where, uh, to give easy solutions where there are no easy solutions. Um, so, uh, but I want to focus not about the, the facts and the studies and the statistics on are these different ideas, which one's better. I just want to talk about the difference in how they're actually used. So I'm going to start off with a, uh, start off with a, a video. Hey, uh, we're going to start with a commercial. Let's face it. We all have times when we feel weak and run down. Well, I'm, sure. I'm a student right now, so I'm pretty... Uh-oh. Alright. Let's start with the commercial. Just enjoy. No, no. <laughs> Alright. Let's face it. We all have times when we feel weak and run down. I'm a student right now, so I'm pretty stressed out of my mind. Okay, I need a break. Can I just sit down for a second? So what if I told you that regaining your strength and feeling renewed was as easy as wearing this? That is so cool. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> this is great. What is it? Wow. Hi, I'm Art Edmonds, and all of these people are excited about iRenew, the revolutionary bracelet that uses natural frequencies to promote strength and wellness. Just watch these strength and balance tests. Without iRenew, these people couldn't even stay on their feet. After slipping iRenew on, they were amazed at how their balance was instantly restored. And these aren't actors, just regular people experiencing iRenew's effects for the first time. Athletes wear it, celebrities wear it, and you've heard the buzz about it on talk TV and the internet. Just put it on, and you'll experience the difference immediately. I want to this with a walk She always saves me for a ride. <laughs> well, the balance alone is amazing. That is something else. Highly recommend it. Every iRenew bracelet is programmed with the natural frequencies that your body positively responds to. The iRenew bracelet is giving me energy and it's giving me balance. I notice that I sit through the night like a baby. iRenew makes me stronger and more flexible. Once you balance your body's energy with iRenew, you balance your overall health. Athletes and celebrities have paid hundreds, even thousands of dollars to get their hands on this technology. But now you can get your iRenew for just $19.99. And because we want you to help spread the word about iRenew, we'll send you a second one free. Just pay separate processing. As soon as you get it, put it on and do the demonstrations for yourself. If it doesn't work exactly like you've seen in this commercial, put it back in the box and send it back for a full refund. No questions asked. You get two iRenew bracelets, a $40 value for just $19.99. iRenew your life right now. Was not to uh, was not to uh, make fun of uh, people who think that this kind of thing is actually the point. The point here is to look at what this product claims to do. This product claimed to give you more energy uh, by wearing a bracelet. Uh, something about frequencies was mentioned, but the main thing here is that these people were weak. These people didn't have problems with balance. Maybe they were in pain. Uh, they lacked something, and this bracelet was supposed to give them energy, to replace that vital force that would make them feel. Uh, feel better and livelier. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all I wanted to, uh, to draw from this video, um, aside from the fact that offering a second one for free uh, to help spread the word. I mean, we've got two wrists, so I just wear both of the things instead of giving one to a friend. But that's just <laughs> um, yeah. So, and, and I think that I think that uh, most of us recognize this is a, this is intended to be a scam, right? This was. You know, this isn't peer-reviewed science. This was cooked up to try and uh, try and just make some money from people. You know, is this concept of energy being this kind of force that's that's drawn uh, that's drawn uh, 
from objects and possibly into our body, uh, is that actually a widely held belief? Um, so my uh, second video that I want to show you is, uh, is a series of quotes by a gentleman by the name of Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra, yeah. Uh, he's a best-selling author. Uh, he's actually a legitimate doctor uh, who comes from legitimate, uh, he's uh, worked with hospitals and has done in his past uh, legitimate med medical work. Um, um, let's hear what he has to say about about this type of energy, okay? Let's hear what he has to say about energy. <laughs> Matter seems like a good place to begin. The solidity of the world seems totally indisputable. As a fixed thing that you can see and touch, your body is also reassuringly solid. But beginning with Einstein, modern physics has assured us that this solidity is a mirage. After all, the body is made up of atoms. These atoms are particles that are whirling at lightning speeds around huge empty spaces. And the particles aren't material objects. They are fluctuations of energy and information in a huge void of energy and information. If you could see the body as it really is, you'd see that 99.9999% of it is mostly empty space. And the 0.00001% of it, which you see as matter, is also empty space. The matter is just an illusion, an artifact of our perceptual experiences. As you sift through this very solid looking material body, you only have to go so far before you end up with a handful of nothing. This is a scientific fact. The question is, what is this nothingness? What is this empty space that makes up everything in existence? Because it's very clear that the basic raw material of the universe is that it's not material. The essential stuff of the universe is non-stuff. Because an atom, which is the basic unit of matter, is not really a solid entity. It's a void. But is this void an emptiness? Or could it be the womb of creation itself? Could it be the source of life itself? Is this non-stuff, non-matter that makes up the entire universe just emptiness? Or is it thinking non-stuff, thinking non-matter that curves back within its own self and creates everything in existence from matter to energy to time to space? As you dissect through the body, the various layers of organs, tissues, cells, molecules and atoms peel away until at the subatomic realm all that remains are bundles of energy vibrations. The nerve receptors in the body are switching stations that can take energy vibrations and turn them into touch, sight, sound and so on. throughout everything. Um, and that is certainly a concept that's out there. Now what I'd like to say is that uh, physicists, at least myself and dare say many of my colleagues, you can raise your hands if you're in the audience, uh, would not uh, say the same thing. We might, be, uh, we might be tempted to make claims that say you know, most everything is energy, but what we're saying is something completely uh, uh, different. It has a different uh, uh, a different structure, even though we might use the same words. And this is the this is the the, the problem here is in this this different definition. When a physicist talks about energy. We're talking about 
we're generally talking about something uh, that's mostly a useful mathematical object. It's a thing that you can use. You can calculate about a system that will be the same at some later point in time. The system is some kind of complicated thing, a Ferris wheel, planets, whatever uh, you can imagine. You can calculate uh, the certain quantities that are called energies, or add them all up and have one energy, and that quantity will not change. Right? So here's the big thing, here's the big secret. This allows us to predict the future, right? So, uh, you know, the, the people were uh, advertising the magnet magnetic bracelets to help you use more energy, what I offer you, with the physicist's understanding of energy, is the ability to predict the future. Uh, now, it takes a lot of work and effort, you have to go through the equations, you have to actually do your homework, but at the end of the day, you can, in limited ways, uh, predict the future. That's what we mean, uh, physicists, when we say uh, that, uh, that uh, um, energy is a very useful concept. Now, about it, filling all of time and space. I could spend a complete other uh, day and a half up here talking about the bad of an interpretation of quantum mechanics. Uh, but I'd like to talk a bit more about uh, this idea of energy and how it's, how it's used. So um, I said that the physicists have this number that we can calculate. Uh, what is there to say that there isn't some kind of a life force that we feel and that moves around? Uh, well, we can't detect such a Anytime we try and put any type of instrument that would normally measure what we call that energy, to measure some kind of a life force or a vital force that flows and binds us and connects us all that uh, stuff, uh, it's just not there. In fact, uh, Deepak Chopra, when the question is put to him, uh, can explain that he doesn't uh, even mean uh, he doesn't even mean that uh, that there's actually such an energy, but it's just a uh, metaphor. So again, I'll go to his words on that one, uh, interviewed by someone who some you might recognize. In the Middle Ages, healers would conjure up evil spirits or magical spells. Now, in the 21st century, it seems they turn to black holes and, above all, quantum physics. Quantum theory accounts for the anomalous behavior of light and atoms. It's astonishingly accurate, but notoriously difficult to grasp. But Deepak Chopra, who once qualified as a doctor, has seized upon quantum jargon and applied it to healing. He claims disease can be caused and cured by a shift in consciousness. You're automatically believing in God. Chopra has managed to become a one-man alternative health industry. He's worth up to $75,000 per lecture, and in this era of self-absorption, he claims Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Hillary Clinton as followers. If you feel genuinely attractive, you'll attract other people to you. The great American physicist Richard Feynman once said, if you think you understand quantum theory, you don't understand quantum theory. Isn't Deepak Chopra just exploiting quantum jargon as plausible sounding hocus pocus? Quantum healing is a theory that a shift in consciousness creates a shift in biology. That's it. We try and get into every aspect of a patient's life, their relationships, their hopes, their dreams, and uh, then we combine it with a ritual of um, deep meditation, massage, and really a lot of spiritual counseling, including the fear of death. We think that uh, many times uh, patients uh, uh, feel healed even though they may die from a disease if they learn to go beyond their personal fear of death. And you can never do that unless you uh, have a patient have a spiritual experience. Where did the quantum theory come into that? Oh, it's just a metaphor, just like uh, a, an electron or a photon is an indivisible unit of information and energy. A thought 
is an indivisible unit of consciousness. Oh, so it's a it's a metaphor for a for a unit. It's nothing to do with quantum theory as in physics. No, I think quantum theory has a lot of uh, things to say about observer effect. There are a school of physicists who believe that quantum leaps, for example, are examples of discontinuity, and uh, creativity in consciousness is also an example of discontinuity, and that healing may be a biological phenomenon that uh, relies on biological creativity, that at very fundamental levels it may be a discontinuous phenomenon, it's something unpredictable that happens in the proliferation of uncertainty. So it sounds like a sort of poetic use of the word discontinuity. It's, it's actually confusion, isn't it, to bring in um, quantum theory other than as a metaphor. But it sounds though you're both doing it as a metaphor and a, a little tinge of, of something like what physicists are talking about as well. Well, I think there's controversy. The aficionados in the world of quantum physics have somehow hijacked the word for their own use. Oh, okay. So they've hijacked your word I think what happens is that there are fundamentalists in science. That is absolutely wrong. Science's quest is to try to sort out, to tease out those bits that we don't and understand. Science has become out. so arrogant in its, um, in its premise that it has all the answers in a mechanistic approach that it has, whilst it has gotten rid of lots of things like polio and malaria and tuberculosis in many parts of the world, uh, we are now seeing the emergence of modern epidemics that are a result of some of the things that have come about through science. Chopra, at least, wears his disdain for Western science openly. The rest of us are prone to politely blurring the vital distinction between science and mumbo-jumbo. explain certain types of more complicated things by analogy? Um, uh, or should energy just be left to you know, scientists who have been in the business of trying to define it and quantify it for about 450 years at least uh, going on? Um, so there's some choices for it. I don't want to tell you what the right way is. We can discuss this in the groups uh, during the rest of the meeting. Um, but what I do want to point out is that this is not necessarily, uh, if you think that this, this notion of energy is a, uh, a, energy is a life force, it's just kind of a, a harmless idea that, uh, that sits out in there and doesn't do any uh, harm or good, it's just a nice thing for people to believe, or even as a metaphor. I'd like to point out that there are several uh, groups uh, and worldviews uh, that put forth that idea as actual uh, medicine, as actual help for medical conditions. Uh, again, I'm not going to tell you whether this is right or wrong. This is something you can make up your own mind about. I just want to point out one of the major groups uh, that, that does use this uh, as a real uh, legitimate thing. So uh, the practice is, is called uh, is called Riki or Rike. Um, it's a uh, Japanese art that has to do with merging the spirit, uh, the mind, and then the physical life force, the key. So I'll show you just a brief video on, for people who do not know anything about uh, what Reiki is, this is a short uh, introduction to uh, what a Reiki session is like. Hi, my name is Katherine Bradshaw. I'm a holistic health practitioner and Reiki master. I want to give you a brief overview of what Reiki is. Reiki is energetic healing. It's spiritually guided, unconditional love. As a Reiki practitioner, I would work with you and the different chakras that line your body and the energy that flows in your meridians. It's a very powerful, yet subtle and gentle energetic healing. Let me give you an idea of what to expect from your first Reiki session. You'll be lying face up at a massage table, just like this. I'll place a bolster under your knees for added support. And I'll offer you a sheet or blanket to make you more comfortable. Finally, I'll place an aromatherapy eye pillow over your eyes to help you completely relax. 
During the Reiki session, I will either hold my hands a few inches above your body or place them down gently on that specific area. The question that people ask me the most is, will I receive the benefits of Reiki if I fall asleep? The answer is yes. The Reiki energy will continue to flow. Thank you so much for watching my video. I wish you happiness and health. doesn't exist, uh, you know, should uh, society allow people to peddle it as a legitimate cure uh, when it's not? And I'll just, uh, just to emphasize the point that this is being promoted as a legitimate cure and not just on fringe websites and in society pockets. How many people here know uh, the name Dr. Oz? Just raise your hand real quick. Dr. Oz. There's medical schools and hospitals in this country, and I know firsthand the amazing miracles we can achieve with modern Western medicine. But I also know that for centuries, people around the world have developed alternative therapies to treat the body, mind, and the soul. So today, I'm revealing my ultimate alternative medicine secrets. If you've got a medical problem you can't solve, you may find the answer in the next few minutes. Start by paying attention to this. It provides me a good segue to what I think may be ultimately the most important alternative medicine treatment of all. And we are embarking on this whole new vista of opportunities. It broadens dramatically the spectrum of where we might be able to go in our bodies. And this is the area of energy medicine. And joining me today, today is Pamela Miles. Pamela's actually been to the operating room with me What we have done Reiki, and you're a Reiki master. My, you know, my wife Lisa is Reiki master. So when the kids get sick, uh, when I'm out of sorts, she actually comes by. I can't even tell when she's treating me. Sometimes she secretly treats me. She thinks I'm in a bad mood. And I see hands moving around, but I actually feel the heat. Um, and I, if you don't mind, maybe we can do some Reiki. And, Certainly. Have you had Reiki therapy before? I have not. Okay, so once you try it, and as you're doing it, if you don't mind explaining, Pamela, a little bit about Reiki. Certainly. Reiki is a balancing practice. And so rather than addressing the headache or whatever else is the problem, what it does is it influences the person's overall system toward balance. And then as her system becomes more balanced, symptoms tend to fall away. Then over time, uh, for example, if, if you get headaches, you know, you may find that you get them less frequently. Do you feel anything, Dolita? Oh yes, my headache's going away. Your headache's going away. Yes. And do you feel any heat? Yes. Because those are usually what I feel. Here are the three things I want you to remember from today's show. First off, try Reiki. This alternative medicine treatment can manipulate your energy and cure what ails you. Secondly, boost your metabolism. Muscle helps burn extra calories. So try doing squats to build a better body. And finally, check your blood pressure. It shouldn't be any higher than 115 over 75. If it is, you need to make some adjustments to your diet. And those are my doctor's orders. You have the power to change your life this year. Start using one of these tips today. See a difference. I'll see you next time. For those wondering, season five of the Dr. Oz show starts next Monday on Global <laughs> So there are people on both sides of this issue uh, that believe strongly, that believe this is an actual thing. Dr. Oz has a white following. Most people in this room were aware of his existence. Um, you know, this is something that is in our culture, in our society. What do we think about it? What do we feel about it? Who should we listen to? Who's actually uh, in our 
acting in the public's interest, who's acting in their own personal best interest. These are things that uh, uh, we can talk about for the rest of the meeting. Um, uh, but before we break up into groups, just any questions about anything that I've said or anything that's gone so far? Um, why do they hold the gifts that they do? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're illegitimately. I mean, they could be very legitimate. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just asking as a philosopher of mind. There, there is a whole sociology behind, you know, for, for those people that mainstream medicine has not offered a solution. You're not going to give up. I mean, psychologists know this effect. So you're not going to give up. And there is a predilection then for people to go to an alternative, where now they're just a little bit too. Hopelessness drives one to be looking to things that even a rational person might think would be kind of radical and perhaps sort of nonsensical. Okay. How have they performed those tests? So might I have We're going to have a discussion later. Okay. Just like direct questions. Any other direct questions? Uh, it's a fantastic thing to pick up back on in discussion. Anything else in here? Direct questions about videos here or about what a physicist might say? Uh, I didn't say too much about that. Uh, because there are a few of us here in the audio okay. Zach, so Zach, what is energy? <laughs> no, well, so, again, responding as a physicist, I would just say it's a, it's a useful mathematical concept. We get in, in pretty much every system, you know, in every system, uh, one of the first things that you do when you're studying it is find the things that are conserved as the system changes. Because those allow you to uh, connect your current observations with future observations with past observations to give you an understanding of what happens to the system as it changes. Um, so that's what I would say that energy is. It's just this kind of calculational or accounting tool to keep track of the state of system of a system at different times. That might give one the impression that there's something that's fixed and never changing, but it's really just an amalgamation of all the other measurable properties. It's very difficult to go out and directly measure energy itself. Usually we measure other things and build energy out of it because it is a useful uh, mathematical uh, concept to use. Other questions? Jack, your hand. Let's go. Um, so my question is about, so Deepak Chopra had a bunch of um, ideas that in one video talked about as their science, and the other he mentioned it being metaphor. And he talked about how he misinterpreted like quantum physics, things like that. He talked about, and I've heard this, you know, in like high school, like science classes, that the idea that we are mostly like empty space. Is that, as someone who's done a lot of like science and things, is that an accurate representation, is, or is it like misinterpretation of an idea? If it is, what's uh, the proper way of interpreting it? So, that? if you ask different physicists, you'll get different answers. Uh, as a someone who's a quantum theorist myself, uh, what I would tell you is that the current models seem to indicate that. Everything that we would call space and time is filled uh, with, uh, with fields. They're not fields of energy. They're fields of, uh, of matter, in a sense. It's just that matter is not, what we learn in quantum mechanics is not that matter is you know, like billiard balls or tables or chairs or anything that's like solid and physical. Uh, matter itself is actually more of a, uh, of a dispersed type of phenomenon. Now, the interactions between matter might be uh, might be occur only in points, or again, that's just the only way that we can treat it because the math gets so hairy and difficult that that's the best we can do is to treat it as a bunch of points as opposed to think of blobs of things interacting. That's just really really difficult. But it's more of a blobby kind of field that fills all of space. It's not energy field. Now, I would say that there is one electron field that fills all of space. And what we call electrons are, are uh, localized little oscillations or disturbances within that field. That's what our current math, mod, mathematical model seems to indicate. Now, there's a lot of room between those disturbances, but it's filled with potential electrons or potential to have, um, have an electron in it. That's one way of thinking about it. But it's not as if there's a thing such as emptiness in the modern quantum theories. I would say that's not, that's not, that there's no nothing. 